afternoon. Welcome to our very first Marketing Your Business in Uncertain Times. This is our very first Key to Success speaker series. So we are very excited to start this, launch this during this quarantine time on Facebook Live. So before I move on to introducing our three guests that we have today to talk about marketing during this time, I do want to remind you that we will be accepting comments live during this broadcast. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask these ladies, please make sure to comment it and we will do our best to get your to your question live. Also, please let us know that you're here by commenting or liking the post. Um, it will be available later after it has gone live, so you can go back and watch later. But please let us know if you are watching live just by commenting or liking. So we are going to turn it over to our three guests here. I would love for them to introduce themselves. So let's start with how about Carol? How about you introduce yourself, just give us a little background and experience and maybe your role with Trio. Hi, Hi yes, yes. Uh, Carol, Carol Sowers. Sowers. I'm one of the partners, the partners at, at Trio, Trio Marketing. Marketing. And um, um, my, my background, background is in media, communications, communications uh, content development, and strategic planning. And um, I'll let, pass, it pass it off to, to Allie, Allie with her, her background. Perfect. Allie Kistner. Um, my background is account management, business development. Um, I did community relations for seven years, worked for a larger agency downtown. So that's where my background lies. Emily? Sure. Uh, so my name is Emily Crawford, and um, I have a little over 15 years experience in um, creative development. Um, I'm a bit of a creative engineer, so I do a lot of the graphic design, website design, um, any type of creative development that comes through, um, whether it be putting together a scope of work for a, like the Oberlin Parker Readem, where we just redid their children's exhibit. So we um, can do big projects like that, or um, we can work on your brochures and um, any type of logo design that you might need. So I'm a bit of the creative brain. The girls like to kind of um, control me a little bit because I get a little wild with my creativity. That's part of my job. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really fun. But thank you everybody for coming today. Yeah. You really have to have a well-rounded team to be able to do that. So um, before we move on, I know we want to talk to our members and our businesses about how they can operate specifically in marketing during this time. But I just want to make sure that we cover all the basis of Trio Marketing. As a one of our chamber members, we really appreciate what you have to offer. And we would just love to let our viewers know what exactly that is. So if you could, if someone could, one of you could T tackle that and just let us know what services you do offer and what Trio Marketing is all about. Maybe even where you got your name because I had a question about that before too. So if one of you wanted to take off with that. Well, I'll, I'll say, say we're, we're, we're a trio, we're a trio. Um, but, uh, um, but our uh, spelling our is because there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no I, I in trio. trio. <laughs> it takes the it three takes of us to make it happen. To make it happen. Um, um, and we're a full service, full service marketing, marketing branding, branding communications, communications firm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for reviewing that. We do want to make sure that we are providing some value to our members still while we're at the stay at home process. So that was kind of our goal in starting this What's Your Key to Success series. And thank you for being our guinea pigs because we are still testing this out. Just a second ago, um, these girls could hear the train coming by my apartment. So please, please bear in mind that if you are viewing, we are getting through some of those hiccups, but we are really excited to be launching this and providing value in that way. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we would love to know what your recommendations are for businesses that are that are operating under this stay at home order. How can they continue to share their messages? And may, maybe we'll start with Emily for this one. How can businesses continue to share their messages? Sure. So in times like these, it's so important um, to remember to stay 
a part of the conversation, to continue communicating. And even though the doors of your organization might be closed, um, you can still provide value. So we've seen a lot of instances where organizations um, are kind of being very nimble and thinking of ways that they can help outside of what they would normally offer. So the restaurants are doing the to-go menus. We've seen the Riger doing their hand sanitizer. And right now it's a really, um, times like these are when the entrepreneurial spirit really comes through and people start thinking of new ways to do things in their business. And a lot of times it can be very profitable. So my advice would be is to, to not say, okay, well, our doors are closed. We can't, we have nothing to offer. Continue to seek out things that you can offer, things that would be valuable to them and um, use your uh, database. So we will talk about this a little bit more later, but in times like these, this is why it's so important to have an email database where you can reach out to your customers at any time and give them updates on what's happening. Um, so I, I will let um, some of the other girls kind of touch on that, but that would be the most important thing to do is to not, don't stop communicating, always over communicate what's happening during a time like this. Great, I love the emphasis on the email database. We've definitely found that to be helpful here at the chamber as well in our marketing strategy while from home. So. Ali, did you have anything to add to that as far as marketing while the stay-at-home order is in place? I think, like Emily said, communication is key. This is still a great opportunity to continue to build those relationships with your clients, your customers, um, and finding different opportunities even to build on your email database that you have currently set up. And if you don't have one set up, now is the time to start. Are there any specific tools that you would recommend to start doing that? Sometimes I know there's just so many options and resources out there that it might be hard to begin. So is there, do you guys have any recommendations of a place to start forming that email database? Right, um, so I could take this one. Uh, typically what we would ask is that you have a landing page on your website and it would be a simple two-step process where you create some type of ad on your Facebook page. So you would need to have a business Facebook page and you would create an ad um, for maybe $10 a day where you're um, giving a call to action. And so it's not necessarily a um, give us your email address. It would be a sign up to receive a uh, one day free workshop or sign up to receive a link to my top 10 hits to XYZ. So you're offering something for free and in exchange, in order for them to get that offer, they're having to give their email address. And so what you will do is kind of keep those email addresses. There needs to be an opt-in so that you don't get blacklisted. Um, but they, if, once you add that email opt-in, they're choosing to be on your marketing list. So anytime something like this, this does happen, or if you want to just continue sending them emails, um, you would have those addresses already in your system. That's just one, one way. Yeah, I'm hearing two action steps already that businesses can take to go virtual during this time. And one of them is starting that Facebook business page if they haven't already. And then the other one is get assembling that email database through a sign up process. So those are two action steps already from that. So that's perfect. I'm curious, you know, we're talking about marketing and difficult times. Have you all seen anyone, a company or an organization that is doing this really well, maybe really catching attention and succeeding at this marketing during difficult times? Maybe Carol? Yeah, we just had, had a client this morning that um, changed up their model a little bit and what they were offering. And um, Emily put together some graphics for them, put it out online, and within, what was the time frame, Emily? Oh, About an hour? Seconds. It was immediate. Yeah. So they had how many? 86 shares within the first hour? Yeah. Um, it was over a hundred, it's over a hundred shares now. And, um, you know, um, hundreds of people commenting. It was a local restaurant that's very well known. And they, um, it was Ponax actually, it's Ponax Mexican restaurant is our client and they had closed and, um, their, their audience was just craving. We have to have Ponax, Ponax during the pandemic. And so we worked with them to try to figure out what the best option was because they, you know, like most companies are trying to balance this. How do we order? How do we keep our employees here? 
but not knowing how many people would actually come. And so we worked with them on a limited menu, put together the Ponux party pack, and then marketed that out. And I'm telling you, these people have gone crazy. If you if you aren't um, friends or like the Ponux page, go there. Just you so, don't know, get paid for saying that. But go check, go check out. Um, it's wild. Like they broke the internet this morning just because people are craving um, something of normalcy. They, they want to feel... Um, like they can go to their favorite restaurant and still continue to get those things that bring comfort to them. And uh, so, yeah, I would say that um, in a situation like this, that doing it well means reacting to what your customers are really asking for. So instead of you sitting in your desk thinking, well, I wonder what we could provide too, you could look to your audience and ask them, what, how can we help you? What can we provide for you? And then put together a package or a message that kind of meets that demand of your audience. Another good I also example. Say, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Allie. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say another good example. We do a lot of um, tourism and travel, and something we are spinning a message, um, kind of flipping it around for them as far as don't cancel your trip, just reschedule it. We're here for you. We care. We're waiting for you to come visit us. So making sure that you continue that communication and making sure that you tell your audience what you need. They they really need those, you know, beds in, or heads in the beds and butts in the seats, as Emily likes to say. Um, so making sure that they're communicating that. Right, right. and, and by, by listening, listening to your customers, and, and then, then also, also listening, listening to your employees. Your employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of your employees are entrepreneurs themselves or may have that entrepreneurial spirit. So they may see opportunities as well. So I think it's a good time to keep that conversation open and be transparent and just ask for ideas. That's great. Yeah, I love the idea of actually, instead of sitting here and brainstorming, oh, what do they want from us? What do they need from us? Just asking. It's as simple as that sometimes. I love that. So that's great. So um, just so you know, Carol, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not avoiding you on purpose, but you are still having a little bit of echo trouble. Yes. So I might direct the questions a little more at Allie and Emily, but feel free if you have something quick to add in, feel free to, um, I might direct them a little more toward them. Obviously we all know that Carol has a lot to offer. <laughs> Um, so you did mention a couple like the Ponax and um, travel and food in general, a couple of those categories of businesses that are doing well with these strategies. What do you think makes their marketing strategies work so well? And how could a, a business that maybe isn't in that specific category, like mm -hmm. hospitality, food, that sort of thing, how could they apply those strategies to their businesses and their marketing during this time? I think one thing is making sure that they're communicating not only consistently still, but quickly. Um, we have a company that's in the log um, logistics area that's courier services and just sending out a simple email saying, we're still open, we're essential, and we're here to support you has been huge for them. And I think too, um, in addition to that, you almost um, need to set yourself up. And, and if you haven't done any of this yet, there's still time and it's okay. But there's some basic things that should be set up in your business where you have uh, a way to mass email people. So maybe that's through a MailChimp or a constant contact and um, getting your list uploaded through that. And then there's, like I said before, having a Facebook page um, and then having those email addresses. So I think making sure that you have some of that infrastructure in place so that when it is time to go, you have to go fast and you have a message ready. So when uh, my background is in public relations and I've always learned to develop a crisis PR statement uh, that would be kind of for a general crisis PR situation and then you can edit it down. So let's say um, we don't necessarily have one ready for the pandemic right now. If you're an organization that's new or um, you don't typically communicate a lot with your customers, it's okay. You can still formulate this kind of crisis com communication plan and some type of statement where it would start out like, um, we care for our customers and we care about you. Or um, in these times, we know that X, Y, Z. So there's really like, comforting um communications that can happen during these times that help connect with your audience. So having that crisis communication plan or statement in place, 
having an email address, having a way to communicate through mass email, and having your social media platforms in place. And I will mention too that with social media, it doesn't mean you have to be on all of them. If you only have time for one, I would recommend Facebook because that's where majority of um, your target market's probably gonna be unless you're in a very niche market, then that might change. But I would choose Facebook. It's a broader, uh, sorry, my somebody's mowing right outside my house right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I would pick um, Facebook to start with and really hone in and focus on one social media medium um, so that you're not stretching yourself too thin. And just to clarify, that should be a business Facebook page, correct? Correct. So you have your personal profile, and through your personal profile, you would become an administrator of the page. Okay, perfect. Um, so you were mentioning some of the resources, MailChimp, Constant Contact, things like that. Are there some resources like that that float to the top of your um, lists whenever you're recommending to people who's main marketing strategy is social media or digital format? Yes, so we typically will work through MailChimp because um, the number one, the plan is free up to a certain amount of email addresses and um, the pricing is better. So we've just found that they're easier to work with and that's who we typically work with. Well, and a big reason too, Morgan, why all of this communication um, regardless of what channel you're going through, you're building loyalty with your customers and your clients and consumers, which when this storm passes, that's going to mean the most. So that's important. Yeah, it sounds like the constant trend here is that the worst thing you could do is not communicate at all. Don't market yes. at all. And then that's, you know, that's the worst thing you can do. Just keep doing something, asking something, engaging somehow, and it'll probably benefit you. That's what it sounds like. So um, how do you all think that, you know, this transition, this change is going to affect how businesses market themselves after this? You know, what, what are we learning from this? What is the upside of having this experience? Um, we have had a ton of clients ask for what we like to call digital optimization. Uh, so it's basically making sure that all of their online platforms are um, in shape, they look good, they their branding is consistent across the board, and that they even have those platforms. So we work a lot on um, digital optimization, and I think that that's where people will find uh, after this, uh, whenever this may end and I, I believe it'll it, it's it's something that's going to be a, a change in the way we do things from here on out because now we're prepared and it's being prepared in an online platform so even the school districts are finding that their school platforms are, are failing daily and it's causing them to go back and look at their hosting so does your website accept the volume of, of people that can come through we have multiple websites we work on that um, we have to make sure that the volume of visitors are coming through are supported on the back end by the hosting of, of the website. So I would say the digital optimization is kind of a key word that you'll hear and the one thing that we've been asked about the most as kind of a hurry up and help us. Awesome, anything to add on that, Ali? Um, I think that covers a lot of it. Okay, awesome. We do have a question I think that came in from the Independence EDC. I think it might come up on the screen, but I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, there it is. What information can a business prepare now that will help them when they start opening to the public again? Hmm, that's a tough one. Um, because we don't know when that is. It's such this, this is lingering. But I, I would feel that it would be kind of something of comfort of, uh, when you're in Las Vegas is doing a really good job with this Las Vegas tourism, um, their, their DMO is doing an amazing job where it's, you know, like we care for you. We'll be here when you're ready to come back. So I think that the messaging that could be prepared is that we will still be here after this. Um, and if that's an unknown as well, because it's been hit financially, um, maybe thinking of a new way to provide service where if for some odd reason you would have to shutter your brick and mortar, you would be able to still provide your services online somehow. So I think preparing a message for um, 
kind of what the future of your organization looks like after this passes, which is this weird indefinite date at this moment, but kind of showing the prospect of the future and keeping it bright and giving people hope. Great. Anything to add on that, Ali? I think um, the nature of this question might also be coming from, you know, a lot of our means of productivity are paused right now. A lot of businesses that require face-to-face -face or require being, yeah, just in person with people, communicating regularly in that format. But what could they, are there creative ways for them to start doing something now that would benefit them longer down the road that maybe they didn't have the time to do before whenever they were meeting in, in person or, do, you know, doing, the, doing those things that can be done here digitally that will benefit them further down the road? Oh, absolutely. I think a majority of our clients right now have a whole their own honey to do list that they're going through and cleaning up and going back to that digital optimization. And they also created the honey to do list for us. <laughs> uh, so making sure that everything has that's kind of on your once list is being checked off anything that you can knock out right now and then also still communicating that you can get people excited for what's coming in the future. Um, even if we don't know if that's a month down the road or three months down the road, you know, it's it's just kind of um, dropping those pieces of information. Um, we call it the drip campaign, giving them enough information to get them excited and you can build on that through your communication. I think, I oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say I love that. You're kind of like teasing them each, each step of the way. Yeah. I think, too, it's a really good time to – um, get your QuickBooks in order if you if you haven't done um, a good <laughs> in a couple months. Counting myself as one of those. Um, getting getting some your finances, doing some budget projections, going through your um, search engine optimization on your website, making sure that your keywords are up to date, going through all of your social media profiles, and making sure that your photos and your logos and um, all of your about information that it's all what you want it to be. A lot of people don't know that on a Facebook page, there's actually a spot for an image and an about us. And that is sometimes so, so important because if they, if you don't catch them, um, if they don't click on your website link from your Facebook page, you can often drop a lot of the good content right there in that section. So it would just be an image and then about us. And it gives you a ton of room um, to fill out that about us sections on Facebook. So typically in, in the small snippet, they only give you a couple words, but in that about section on your main page, you can see that it, you can add as many paragraphs as you need to there. So things like that, just to kind of do some housekeeping, like Ali was saying, and get things kind of cleaned up, maybe um, get a new profile picture for yourself. If, if you're in need of a headshot, um, a lot of photographers can stand six feet away and take your picture. And they are all still in business and willing to come help. So maybe getting your headshot taken and uh, getting a lot of your LinkedIn profile updated with some of your past experience um, or company experience on there as well, adding your awards, accolades, and being active on LinkedIn as well. People are going to LinkedIn as a space to find those who are um, a known authority in their trade. So during this time, if you if you have important information that you can provide to others, LinkedIn is a really great place for that, for business networking as well as the Chamber um, Facebook page. Yeah, and even beyond that, working on, um, you know, beyond social media, that SEO, SEM work, um, cleaning up your content and profiles, all of it, making sure it's consistent. Like Emily said, not only on that About page, but also um, cleaning up, making sure your website actually speaks to your SEO. So if that's something that anyone has questions about beyond this, because I know SEO is a world of its own. Uh, we're happy to help and connect privately too, but it's just, there's so many opportunities. Yes, and I think that everything you just list, listed is so great. We, we really need this practical, these practical things that always kind of fall to the wayside. You kind of put them on the back burner because you're, you're going to the next event or you're having the next meeting or the next phone call, you know, it's just one project to the, so there are so many things that we say, oh, I'll do that later. 
well, now is later. So that that's exactly what I wanted was kind of that list of where these kind of this list of to do's that you can get done working from home. So I think I am going to turn it over to um, one of our final questions and then we'll do a couple announcements. But for this last question, we would just really like to know for businesses that have had to close their doors or have lost customers through this, or maybe even just had to change their the structure of their business, they've had to pivot, pivot a lot during the pandemic. What would you suggest in their relaunch post quarantine? I almost said post apocalypse. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But, um, post, post quarantine, if they are planning to relaunch or do something big to get their business back out there, open their doors or try to get customers back, what do you think that they should do to gain that traction in a quick way? Well, I think transparency is going to be key. I think we're all watching what's unfolding right now and it's scary, it's uncertain. And the one thing everyone agrees on is we want small business, big business, we want all business to survive this. So I think, um, again, I keep going back with that communication, even if it's phone calls to your clients individually or reaching out to people that are your biggest supporters and cheerleaders, it's continuing to build those relationships and communicate to them what your plans are. And even if it's, you know, my business is really hurting and I'm gonna, I want to give this another shot, but I need your support. And I think being transparent in your message is important. I agree. And I think too, when we look at doing a normal launch, if we were doing a, a business launch of any type, we like to put together all of the pieces first. So we would have all of the graphics and all of the messaging content, um, all of these, the schedule, and get all of that ready on the back end so that when you do decide to relaunch, and kind of re-enter society, you have it all planned out and scheduled so that the message is cohesive across the board. And it's not this, um, you know, oh, well, I know yesterday we said we were gonna do this, but today we decided we're gonna do this. And so do, everybody's confused anyway. They're all kind of in this uh, fog. I know that, you know, I've got my three children at home and trying to run the company. And so it's, we're all just trying to survive. So the messaging that goes out needs to be very concise and it needs to be well, we all make mistakes but it needs to try to be as right as it can be the first time so you're not going back on your word and saying well actually it's this now just really sit down and think to yourself how you want it to look when you relaunch and set it and set it and set some goals for yourself and create that launch plan for yourself where you're setting out um the day that you're going to do it and then what that looks like whether it's an email or you're going to do um, two posts uh, a day or one post a day for the next five days. Lay it all out for yourself, pre-write all the content, pre-find all of the pictures and um, get it all loaded up and, and ready to go so that you um, have a very concise launch plan when it's time to go because everybody else will be doing the same thing and you want to be able to stand out in the crowd. Right, I was gonna say that I suspect that we'll see this you know, many businesses after this period of time. And so it is helpful to have some concrete plans in motion and exactly how to do that. So we do appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Carol. I'm so sorry that we had echo troubles this first time. Hopefully we'll be able to have the opportunity to do it again. But thank you, Carol, Ali, Emily with Trio Marketing. We just Love having this time and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to our members about how they can market during this crazy, not apocalypse quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, I do want to mention a couple of chamber announcements. So we, like I mentioned, this is our first one of our episodes, if you will, in this series and we will have another one Tuesday at 10 a.m. and it's all about how to be a dynamic leader when your team most needs you, which is probably right now. So we will be hearing from Whitney Watson during that and we'd love for you to tune in. It's gonna be this exact same format, Facebook Live at 10 a.m. and you can comment your questions live, but you can also view the recording afterward. Now we also have tomorrow our, we're not stopping Foodie Friday, even though the format has changed a bit. We still want you to pack the pickup line, make sure that you head over to Tim's Pizza. And this is exactly 
what these girls were talking about, giving support to these local businesses before, during, and after this whole process of time. Please do that with Tim's Pizza. We are not going to flood them at the same time because we don't want to promote any sort of grouping. But please remember, if you do visit them, to post it on our Facebook page and to bring cash because they are cash only, cash or check. So make sure that you remember that. Otherwise, it'll be a disappointment when you arrive. And then lastly, please tune in here again on our Facebook page. Every Monday, we are still doing Good Morning Monday, trying to keep as many things consistent as we can during an inconsistent time. So we will be doing Good Morning Monday at 9 a.m. in the same format. So I think those are all of my announcements. I just want to say thank you again to Trio Marketing for doing this program with us. Emily, Allie, and Carol, appreciate your time so much and hope that everyone has a great rest of their week.